I know y'all been waiting on somebody. I don't know who that is, but uh, he finally got here. So, let's see. Hey, everybody. Uh, I guess if uh, I think Dave Harper needs to come up here, and we'll start with Dave. Okay? I'm gonna. Y'all can hear me. I'm, I'm wired all up. I'm gonna sit over here there and talk to you. You know, I've had the opportunity to do this several different times in several different places across the state. No place on the planet I like better than to be able to do it than in West Virginia, and especially in Southern West Virginia. That's really good stuff. Good, good, good stuff. You know, before I get into all this, let me just tell you this, that without any doubt, things are better. Are they done? Well, of course they're not done. You know, we've got lots and lots and lots still to do. Every day we create a better situation and an additional dollar of revenue comes in, we can do more stuff. We can do more stuff to help those that are still waiting and still wanting to be helped and needing to be helped. And by those I mean our state, you know, the beautification of our state all the things that make our standard of life better. Now, you know, not to belabor this in any way, but the reality is just reality. I'm a numbers guy, you know. I don't deal in anything but truth. I'll never not tell you anything but the truth. I'll make a bunch of mistakes, but then I'll move forward. You know, nevertheless, the reality is just as simple as mud, you know. The first day I walked in the office, we were dead flat bankrupt. I don't care what anybody says anytime, anywhere, and I don't think it is wise for any of us to get tired of hearing that because we learn from that. You know, we just don't go appear every day and just walk across the floor and look in the bucket and see if there's anything to eat, and if there's not, we'll just walk back. Or walk across the floor and the bucket's overflowing with stuff to eat. And then we just stand there and eat. And then we walk back. And then the next day we walk over and we really don't have any really idea what is really happening. Well, we don't want to be that kind of people. We don't want to be that at all. You know, we want to remember our past. Remember the fact that we've been 50th forevermore. We're not that today. We're moving. Remember that we had a drug epidemic that just was cannibalizing us. It's still bad, and, but it's better. And I'll give you per, firsthand testimony that I know it's better because I talk to my son all the time and he's hiring people like crazy and all kinds of stuff is going on and all that. But here's the thing. If two years ago, whether it be Sue or whomever it may be, you know, you know, you had, 20 jobs, you would have had 200 applicants. And of those 200 applicants, if you decided to send 100 of them to get a drug test, you know, maybe 12 would have passed the drug test. Today, if you send those 100 to get the drug test, 57 of them will pass it. It's better, it's better. For crying out loud, it's better. You know, is it cured? Of course not. Do we have a long ways to go? Absolutely, but it's better. We're doing stuff, we're doing pilot projects in a couple of places in the state. We're trying to take this drug epidemic on head on, head on, head on. But the pilot projects we hope, one in the south, one in the north, are going to show us stuff, show us more. Show us absolutely really and true, maybe certain, certain things that we've just been missing. So there are so many good things, good things that have happened. 
You know, I tell this story over and over, and it's worthy to tell it everywhere I go. I didn't have the opportunity to tell it last night because I was in Wheeling last night, and I followed me earlier today. I, I mean, I'm, I'm all over the place, you know, but, uh, but nevertheless, I went to the veterans facility or center or whatever you want to call it in Barbersville, and I, I spoke to the veterans there shortly after I was, I'd become governor. And I said to those people, I said, you have given us everything we have, everything. I said, you know, uh, my dad was a captain in World War II, flew, flew a, a bomber in World War II. Now, he never, ever talked about it. You know, I asked him over and over, wouldn't talk about it, you know. Uh, but I talked to those veterans, and I said to those veterans, I said, what can I do to help? And Woody Williams stood up and said, you know, our Medal of Honor winner, stood up and said, we want one thing. We want our retirement exempted from, from income tax, from state income tax. I asked them what it would cost. Somebody came out and said, well, we think it's going to be $2.7 million. And the first thought that went through my mind was just this. How in the world, how in the world to the very people that have given us our very existence here today, right now today, beautiful building, everything else, right today. How could they want so little, so little? The people that have given us so much, you know, honestly, they have just done that. They always ask for a grain of sand and give a mountain of sand, you know, so we were able to help. We were able to do, to grant that wish. Took a little time, but we got it done. You know, along the way, you know, I see Chelsea Ruby in the back and tourism is exploding in the state. It's getting better, better. Now, should it, should it get 10 times better than it is today? Absolutely. What state in the world has the seasons that we have? What state in the world has the beauty that we have? What state in the world has the water? What state's located within 600 miles of two-thirds of the population? It's all just that. And you know what? And I'll tell you this too. You have to believe. You have to believe it's real. And you have to believe that there's real hope. Real, real, real hope. And I see it every day. I see it every day. I see your your step is faster, your head's higher, there's more smiles, there's more people at the used car parking lots, there's absolutely more people at the Dairy Queens, there's more people at the movies, there's more people smiling, there's more people that have hope. You know, Matthew Watt from, from South Charleston called me this morning and he said just this, he said, he said, Governor, I've worked for a long, long, long time on an initiative to be able to help people come out of poverty. You know, Matthew Watt, a guy, a reverend, that I was sitting in with several different pastors, and they were closing the meeting, closing the meeting. I'll never forget this till I die. You know, closing the meeting, and, and one of the pastors was saying, you know, a prayer of, of the close of the meeting. And I felt this hand on my shoulder. And he walked over and put his hand on my shoulder and leaned down and was saying a prayer for me. As long as I live, I'll never forget that, never. This morning he was talking to me about, you know, basically a concept or a program that he had that would help, really, really help those that were trapped in some level of poverty to, that wanted out, that wanted something better wanted something way better. And he said, would you give me 30 minutes to explain this? I thought to myself, exactly the same thought that Woody Williams. Are you kidding me? 30 minutes. Who in the world can turn down 30 minutes, or 30 hours, or 30 days that would help absolutely people crawl out of poverty? So I got right dead on it, dead on it. You know, and uh, we'll see where it takes us. But the long and the short is just this. You know, I would say 
be happy. Be happy. Be happy in every way. We're better. It's a good day in West Virginia. It's a great day. I get to give away money here. Can't be better. It's a good day. It's a good day. I would say this to you, and this doesn't sound very good, but you know, this is just a joke that was told me a long time ago that, you know, two farmers standing there and, you know, and they were talking back and forth to one another. And one of them, had, you know, was a pretty lazy guy and done, hadn't done much and everything and just squandered away and squandered away and squandered away. And he was telling the other fellow that worked pretty hard and everything that the banks wouldn't go with him and everything because the bank had been with him, you know, like five years ago. And, he forgot and didn't change the oil in any of the equipment, and the equipment caught on fire and burned up, and then the next year it was some, something just about as bad, and the next year it was just about as bad, and the next year he had taken the bank's money and gone to Brazil or something like that and spent the money and everything else, and now the bank wouldn't go with him anymore. And he said, be happy, be happy. And he said, how can I be happy? The bank won't go with me anymore. How can I be happy? And he said, be happy. You're not the damn bank. <laughs> now, so nevertheless, you know, I would say to you, you know, that uh, today we ought to be happy. Be happy we're not where we were two years ago, five years ago. We got our coal miners back to work. The Charleston Gazette writes, coal's dead. Are they, are they living in a cave? I mean, for crying out loud, we've got more coal miners back to work today than we surely had a couple years ago, and maybe even four or five years before that. And truly, truly, every single day, we're looking for more and more and more. That's my high-tech flip phone call. See, high-tech. But. Pam, come and get this, so we'll turn this great thing off. But let me, let me just say this. Everybody knows the coal business is better. Everybody knows the value of a coal job. One job, one coal job knocks it out of the world, out of the world. We've got the great Harold Ward here with us today who's doing an unbelievable job, unbelievable job with the BEP. You know, now, one coal job, the multiplier effect of that in the jobs is like 11 more jobs. You know, absolutely, we, can, we want diversification, we want tourism and manufacturing and high tech and higher ed, we want all that stuff. But we should never lose our focus on the fact that we're a natural resource state too. We should treasure our coal jobs treasure our natural resources, whether they be oil and gas and water and timber, treasure our job, treasure who we are. Now, with that, think about this for a second. Everybody knows that we're celebrating. We're celebrating coal is back and coal jobs are better and all that. You know, I've sat in bathhouse after bathhouse recently and looked right at those men and young women and then I sit there and I talk to them and, and I, I say to them, do you think there's any more upside? And they say, oh, we don't know about upside. We're just happy where we're at. Everything's good. You know, everything's good. We don't think there's any more upside. And we're just worried about it going backwards. Well, I'd be worried, at, worried about that too. But here's the thing, 1997 in West Virginia, we mined 181 million tons of coal. 181 million. That's really important that you remember that number. 181 million. Today, today, we're mining 95. Today, 95. A couple years ago, we were in the mid 70s. Before the end of the year, we'll be on above a hundred million ton run rate. Do we have upside? You dead gum right. Dead gum right. So anyway, let me give away some grants. Didn't mean for Dave to stand up here this long. This is Dave Harper, District 10 Manager for the D WBDOH. Now, this is the thing that I, this is, this is government at its best right here. Now get this. The, it says these are, now stay with me. These are the, now how could you name something this? 
transportation alternatives and recreational trails program grants. I don't see how people find their way home that work for, these, for, for that. I mean, rec, transportation alternative, who, who do you work for? I work for transportation alternatives and recreational trails program grants. Hmm. Okay, well, nevertheless, the West Virginia uh, Transportation Alternatives Program is administered by these guys and funded by the Federal Highway Department and therefore primarily sidewalks and lighting and rail trails and all that. So, we've got all kinds of them here and we're going to get people up here. This is the city of Princeton. This is Straley Avenue and North 8th Street Sidewalk Project, $32,000. So if these people come, it's design and replacement of the sidewalk along with Straley Avenue and North 8th Street in Princeton. Is anybody here? Okay. All right. We're going to let y'all hold that. I'm going to shake your hands. How you doing, man? Good to see you. Good to see you. Whoa, whoa, don't run off. I'm going to let somebody take your picture here. Okay, now I'm running off. All right. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you, sir. Okay, this is the city of Oak Hill. Oak Hill East End pedestrian upgrade. 200,000. Design of approximately two miles of new and replacement sidewalk along Main Street in the east end of the Oak Hill area. Good deal. Good deal. Thank you, Thank you sir. Thank you, man. Thank you. Y'all stand here and look good. Make me look good. Okay, thank y'all. Thank you again. Okay. This is in the town of Jaeger. Okay, Jaeger sidewalk repair and rehabilitation. 132,000. Construction of approximately 750 linear feet of sidewalk in the town of Jaeger. Too good. Good to see you. Hey, Gordon, how you doing, man? Great to see you. Buddy. <laughs> Say what? We lost our buddy Ron. You know that. Oh, I know. I hate that so bad. I really, really do. Okay, guys. Uh, yeah, y'all. I'm gonna get in the back here. Y'all hold on here. Okay. Okay, guys. Thank y'all. Thank y'all so much. Thank you, sir. Oh, this is too much fun. Okay, New River Gorge uh, National River, Bluestone National Scenic Highway, or Scenic, Scenic River Trail, Causeway. It's $10,000. It's designed and construction of drainage infrastructure to prevent erosion of the Bluestone National Scenic Trail Causeway between Bluestone and Pipestem. All right, way to go. All right, let me, let me say one thing, too. Some of these grants are small, and some of them are, are significantly bigger. And there's, di and there's times and, you know, when, you're, when you're the governor that you're talking about up to millions of dollars, you know. And it may be 30 million, or it may be 50 million, or it may be 4.2 billion, or whatever it may be. Let me tell you, and I'll promise you I've lived my life this way. I've done hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars of projects, and they've been giant projects. And I've been the guy that was at the Little League selling Christmas trees. You know, I've been the guy that was, you know, had a sweet corn patch that, that took the sweet corn and put it in a great big tank with a big giant ice cube as my cooler or my, my cooler freezer or whatever it was, and then packed it and drove it up and down the road and sold it for a dollar a dozen. Now, let me tell you, the only difference, if we can live our lives this way, the only difference in a billion dollar transaction, a hundred million dollar transaction, and a ten thousand dollar transaction is zeros. That transaction is just as important to her as that billion dollar transaction is. And that's the way we should live our lives. Because, and I'm very proud to be able to, to have given you that. That's really good, thank you. 
Okay, Babcock State Park, where I caught so many trout, it was unbelievable at one time in my life. Babcock to Sewell Trail Restoration, Phase 2, 225,000 construction of the rail trail from Babcock to Sewell along the abandoned railroad grade of Mans Creek Railway. Thank you, sir. Are you the superintendent of Babcock? Yes, sir. Yeah. Do you remember Robert Crowley by any chance? Yes, sir. Bob Crowley? Mm -hmm. I knew him very well. Yeah. Good man. Yeah. Okay, Bluestone River Water Trail Group. Bluestone River Water Trail Group, 150,000 design of a hiking trail with river access along Brush Creek from the community of Gardner to the Bluestone National Scenic River. Okay, come on. Man, I've had a bunch of these, haven't I? That's good. Hey guys, good to see all of them. Great to see you, great to see you. How you doing? Way to go. All right, now, don't y'all be running away from me. I'm not that dark. <laughs> y'all hold this. That's y'all. All right, y'all are out of here. Thank you. <laughs> Town of Athens. Athens Park Trail, $48,126. Design and construction of a walking trail within the Athens Town Park located in Athens. May have couldn't be here. He sent his appreciation there. Okay, thank you so much. Thank y'all. Okay. So, oh, woo, woo. All right, thank you. Man. All right. This is the access fund. Project cost eighty thousand. It's design and construction phases of the Fayette County climbing access, stability and development. Stabilization and development. Now, before we have those people come, or they could come, they could head on this way. Is there anybody here? Yes. Come ahead, please. I want Dave to read this. I didn't want him to have to go through every one, but I wanted to read this because everybody's is the same, and I can't see the print. So, you're right, up, sir. It's up to you, Dave. Sponsored by the Access Fund has approved for $80,000 in federal funds for the design and construction phases of the Fayette County Climbing Access Stabilization and Development. And everybody's just kind of following the same format. But anyway, thank you all so much. Thank you. Thank you, sir. No, thank you. Thanks. Thanks again. OK. Now, and Harold, I'm not going to make you stand until I'm ready to go, okay? Let me make one more comment real quick. Think about what one dollar, one dollar of money coming into our state does. Follow the dollar. Follow the dollar, please. One dollar. What's the multiplier effect of one dollar? What does that dollar turn into? Most generally, it'll turn into eight to 14 times one dollar. So just think, that $10,000 grant really represents 80 to 140,000. These are all these monies that we just gave away, what is the multiplier effect of that? It's jobs, it's revenue, it's taxes. It's the next, the next grant, the next, the next, the next. Now, before I go any further, let's do this, please. Any of the kind people that are good enough to serve the state. We've got senators right here in our midst. We've got delegates, I'm sure, back here. We've got lots and lots of people that are serving this state. Please stand up. And I'm not gonna go through everybody, but please stand up and let us at least take the time to recognize the service of these good people. Good job. Good job, guys. Thank you so much for being here. You love West Virginia, you love our communities. And really and truly, a lot of times they take a lot of grief, 
a lot, a lot, a lot of grief in a lot of ways. But, uh, but they're here to serve, and they're trying to help us. So thank you all so much. Okay, this is the Abandoned Mine Lands Grants. This is big stuff here. Today I'm announcing many projects across the state to share millions in grant funding for economic development of, of, of abandoned mine land sites. The grant funding provided by the federal government through the Office of Surface Mining is, is administered through our DEP. These, res, these recipients ap applied for the grant funding earlier this year and were each considered by a committee repre of, of representatives from the DEP, the Department of Commerce, the Department of Transportation, and the Governor's Office. OSMRE must give the final approval. Not us, but the, they, they give the final approval. But sure to goodness, they'll take our recommendations. If they don't, we'll be really mad. But uh, the economic development projects must be located on or, or adjacent to mine sites that ceased operations prior to the signing of the Surface Mine Control and Reclamation Act or SMACRA in on, on August the 3rd, 1977. So, here we go. And these are great. These are so good, so good. Okay. McDowell County, $4.115 million for the McDowell Public Service District. This will allow them to provide sewer service to 115 homes in Ashland and Crumpler. That's where I played Santa Claus forevermore. You know, and uh, there's a fella, Ronald Bailey, and Gordon Lambert just mentioned Ronald to me. He just recently passed away. Let me tell you this, there's a little guy, little cane, you know, worked in the mining business a long, long time ago. Worked like crazy with Gordon and all kind of, and Carl Earp and, and, and a lot of people. To, and came to me, and let me, let me just take one second, because this is worth telling. Called me on the phone and said, we want to meet with you. And we met over in some back of some restaurant in Bluefield. And I thought they were completely crazy, really, truly. They said, we're working with Governor Underwood at the time, and we're trying really, really hard. We've gotten a piece of property, and we're trying really, really hard to get a prison, a federal prison, in McDowell County. And I said, there ain't no way. I mean, there ain't no way that this is going to happen and everything. And they said, but we need you too, because you're mining up there on, on land, and this is going to be, there's going to be some coal on extraction on this property. And really and truly, at the end of the day, if you were to look favorably upon McDowell County and jump in here and try to help us too, maybe we can pull this off. And I said, well, listen, I'm all in. If I, we can help people and all that kind of stuff, I'd be tickled to death to do anything and everything I could do, anytime. And then I left, and I thought, no way. Ronald Bailey right there with him on his little cane. You know, well, one thing led to another, and then lo and behold, all of a sudden they got, they got it to the point in time where it was a bid process. And I bid, I don't, I don't know what it was, but it was two million some odd dollars, you know. There was bids from all of, the next closest bidder I think was $22 million, you know. And, and so, naturally, I got the bid. I bid, all, the only, only thing I could, only way I could see in the world to do it was just do it for what I know it was going to maybe cost. Well, it probably ended up maybe even costing more. But lo and behold, we got it. Pulled off. Done. Because of the foresight of just a few men that just wouldn't take no. Well, Ronald Bailey's not with us now. And I don't know who all else was in that meeting, but they may not be with us too. But really and truly, that man too came to me not long after that and said, you know, you'd make the perfect Santa Claus. <laughs> and I thought, he said, would you come to our church and play Santa Claus? And I thought, now how am I going to get out of this? And then I said, well, Ronald, I'll come if you'll get me a suit. And then I thought to myself, 
Ronald will get me a suit and it'll look like spandex on it. And so I better get my own suit. And then I came every year. I'm gonna tell you without any question, it was Pam sitting in the back who's my executive assistant often came as an L. And uh, you know, goodness happens in these hills every day. That's all there is to it. You know, we know how good we are. The problem is the people on the outside don't know, but they're getting to where they know now. You know, I, I've got to tell you one more story. I was there, and what they did is there was probably, you know, it started out there was maybe, I don't know, 75 kids or whatever, the poorest of the poorest, the toughest of the toughest, and Ronald and all of his helpers, Gordon and was there a bunch of times, and I don't know who all else, but, but you know, they, they, they would put together a great big bag full of toys for these kids. These kids were the poorest and the most, the toughest of the toughest. They would whisper in my ear the name of the child. You know, and then I would call them up. And they would say, this little boy, we found him when he was four weeks old, or we found him when he was, you know, four months old. Found him in a ditch, you know, we don't, you know, and we don't have any idea who his parents are, we don't really know what his name is. You know, it's just, it's, it was, it's just, it was tragic beyond belief. Now let me tell you this story. The day before I went one year, my whole day had been just a nightmare. Just everything had gone wrong. Everything in the world had gone wrong. You know, and I thought, boy, boy, you know, man, what a day. And tomorrow, you know, I'm heading, I'm Santa Claus, and it'll be good, but boy, what a day I've had today. And so, got my suit on we always flew in a helicopter and landed right in the parking lot right there where all the kids could see us and so we did and i got out and i'm still thinking about yesterday and just how tough yesterday was and went in and all of a sudden there are these little kids they surely make you feel a lot better and they whispered in my ear this little girl coming up her name is snowflake and all of a sudden she stood up and she had, she was probably about seven years old chunky as she could be little glasses on and pigtails and here she came running and she ran right up and grabbed a hold of me and she said santa claus i'm going to give you a big hug and i'm telling you that i love you because i know you need that today now that's the god's truth if i die this very second in my life if i die that's the god's truth now then they whispered in my ear that in like three or four days, she's having brain surgery because she's got a tumor. Now, I'm telling you, like I said, in these their heels, there's goodness, there's greatness. So, Gordon and the gang, come on up here. We've got uh, $4.115 million in our pocket to hand you today. And, and Harold, could you come up please? I'm going to let you read the stuff. How we doing? The Abandoned Mine Lands and Economic Development Grant has been approved for $4.115 million to provide sewer service to 115 homes in Ashland and Crumpler. Okay, Harold, you've got to get in this picture too now. Come on, because <laughs> you're the star of the game show. Y'all get up there. I'm going to get in the back here, okay? Smile, people. <laughs> Y'all look at <laughs> All right, guys. Way to go. <laughs> Proud of you. Proud of you. Happy for you. Thank you. No, thank y'all. Thank <laughs> y'all. <laughs> bless you, bless you. Good yeah, to see you. I think y'all home. Y'all should smile. Y'all look at killing home, man. <laughs> bless you, this one. <laughs> okay, we got McDowell County again near Yeager. For a regional sewer project, this, sewer, this, this will provide sewage service to 112 customers and allow the growth of the Hatfield-McCoy related lodging.
All right, Harold, you be the, you be the reader again. Yeah, but this crowd got a smile last one like that's a few long. Look at the <laughs> I'm telling you, y'all are knocking it down, aren't you? <laughs> Uh, once again, uh, approved for $1 million to provide sewer service to 112 customers, allow for the growth of the Hatfield McCoy Trail related to lodging. Okay, guys. Here, you can hold this. Okay. Yeah. Cheese, everybody. Okay, cheese. <laughs> uh, right. Okay, guys. Thank y'all. Appreciate it. God bless you. Thank you. Oh gosh, here we go again, McDowell County again. What are y'all doing? Y'all are killing it. Y'all must have some contacts somewhere. 238,000 for McDowell County's SPD's Berwyn Water Treatment Plant. This is to modernize water treatment and increase capacity for Berwyn Lake Park. Okay, Harold, you be the man. One, once more. $238,000 to modernize water treatment and increase see. capacity for Berwyn Lake Park. Okay, we're going to give you this, okay? All right, thank you. Don't you spend it all in one spot. Oh, spend it in McDowell. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys. Thank y'all. Thank y'all so much. Thank you. Well, don't go far. Don't go far. <laughs> McDowell County, my good gracious. I've got McDowell County, McDowell County again. Town of Bradshaw. Well, you've been overlooked a long time, and we're not overlooking today. This is a rehabilitation of the town's sanitary sewer system, $1.5 million in Bradshaw. How you do, sir? How we doing? Good to see you. I'm gonna let y'all hold, okay? Look that way, be happy. <laughs> Smile. <laughs> All right, proud of you. Thank you, sir. Appreciate you. Appreciate it. No, thank y'all. Okay, now don't go far, you McDowell Countyans. 2.2 million for the Ashland Resort Tourism Development. This is for the expansion of the existing Hatfield McCoy Trail amenities such as cabins, ATV facilities, camp store, outdoor entertainment complex, and reclamation of the abandoned coal mine features. Okay. <laughs> Y'all come over here and hold. Come on, please. Very good. Thank, Thank y'all. Thank you so much. That's a big one. Okay. Now, boy, does this one tickle me, too. They all tickle me. But this is really, this is, this touches right, well, all these do. I mean, for crying out loud. I mean, you're talking to a kid that grew up play, play, playing in the coal bin in Copperston or or gathering eggs with my, at, at my grandmother's house at, uh, on Huff Mountain. No indoor plumbing. West Virginia Hills. I'm the American dream. I'm what it's all about. You are too, in every way. But now get this, at one time, a long, long time ago, I think the first board of directors that I ever served on was the YMCA in Beckley, West Virginia. Probably wasn't a great board member, but first board ever I ever served on was the YMCA. Next board was the Crossroads National Bank, you know, and uh, it was a spinoff of the Bank of Raleigh. Again, I probably wasn't a great board member, but the YMCA. I coached in the Bitty Buddy tournament of the YMCA. Now, team made it all the way to the finals. A little bunch of boys from Beckley, West Virginia. You know, we beat all kinds of really good players, really good team. Lost in the finals to a, kid, a team, an AAU team called the Charlotte Gold. Now, the YMCA has been instrumental in this community forevermore. Needs a new place, doesn't it? It will absolutely spur us on beyond belief in this town, Beckley 
to have a brand new YMCA facility that's big time. Today, we're awarding $4 million for the Klein Complex Phase Two YMCA project, and this is for a community rec recreation and training facility. I think we, and, and as we continued, we continued to support, all this is becoming a reality right in here in West Virginia, right in Beckley, West Virginia. So please come on. Proud day for me. <laughs> How are we doing? Good to see you. How are you doing? Good to see you. Okay. Hey, sir. How are you doing? Back there? All right. Really good stuff. Thank really you. happy. Thank really happy. Appreciate Harold, thank Governor, you. Man. Thank you. Appreciate you, buddy. Okay, I've got a lot, a lot of little paper clips up here today, but uh, good day. Thank you again for coming, and God bless you in every way. Let's just make West Virginia better and better for us all each and every day. Thank you again.